Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be cold brewing on the AeroPress using the AeroPress Go. A number of you asked me to walk through cold brewing on the AeroPress um, and turns out it's remarkably straightforward um, and you know you can it can take a little bit of adjustment to figure out the grind size uh, but once you do that you can brew without heated water now this came up uh, because um, the last video I did where I traveled with this and I had some bad experiences with uh, the quality of hot water for brewing I couldn't get a good brew I realized later on that oh I can cold brew with this I could have used just a bottled water that I had um, straight up. So we're gonna walk through doing that. I'm um, gonna be using uh, Conduit's Congo Mungano for this because I'm familiar with how it tastes and it's really delicious. Uh, before I dive in, a quick update on the go. So a number of people commented that I got it wrong in how I put this back together and that when you put this back together, you don't wanna screw on the filter. Um, to my defense, I scoured every inch of the box and the instructions that I got with my uh, brewer and none of it says anything about that. Now, maybe they updated their things. Uh, maybe I have instruction blindness, which wouldn't surprise me. I'm usually not one for instructions. I just like to dive in and use a thing. Uh, I still think it, it, it's a natural thought to want to screw this back on before um, putting this together. But uh, as a demonstration, this is what I am inclined to do when I put this back together, right? Okay, now I pointed out that there's a bit of a gap there and you put this all back together. And then I ended up having a few times in the travels where um, this would just come off like that. Um, I kind of have to force it right now uh, because it's not a consistent problem. Uh, but what was illustrated to me is that the way you should put it back together is not screw this on, push the plunger all the way through so this is sticking out, then just sit that on top, add your, well actually, this is probably the easier way to do this, uh, add your add your like inside items, you know, the the plunger's all the way through, and as you can kind of see from here, this actually sits flush. There's no, there's no gap. Then this just goes on top like this, and back together as such. And it does indeed sit much better together than the other version. There's, uh, there's less distance here. By a small margin, but enough where this feels more secure. So that's a good thing to note. Feels a little weird putting it back together with all those parts I want to screw it on there. But if you have one of these, uh, that's what you do to, to pack this all together as best as possible. Okay, on to the cold brewing. So this turns out to be really simple. So you may be familiar with the original AeroPress recipe, which is one scoop, one of these scoops, and then you fill up the, the water level to the, to the number one. So basically, however many scoops you put in uh, is where you put the water level up to. Uh, and we're gonna do that with a cold brew. So adding my filter, not washing or anything. You know, we're, we're pretending like this is a travel situation, have limited resources, not gonna bother with rinsing. So filter on, and now I'm gonna put in two scoops of coffee. This is finely ground uh, for drip. One, and ooh, get, oh, maybe a little, slightly more, you know. I'm making it concentrate. Okay, so two scoops. Obviously I use the grinder here, not my hand grinder for this because I'm not traveling and whenever possible I like to use an electric grinder. All right, and now I just have some room temperature water and I'm gonna fill it up to the two. 
maybe just to the top of the two, I guess. I've always kind of wondered about that. Goodness. We have some, uh, have some blooming going on here. I'm just going to give this a stir and let this settle for a second and then fill up a little bit more. Um, okay, yeah, so it's settled slightly. Let me just make a mess here. It's cool. No worries. All right, a little bit more. Okay, there we go. So we're up to the two, and now I need to stir this for one minute. And it looks like I'm going to be doing it for a little more than a minute, but I'm going to get my stopwatch going. And I'm going to stir this for a minute and then come back to you. How about that? Okay, we're pretty much at a minute here. So I'm going to stop and press. Now, a little bit of it did drip in, but uh, not too much. And we're just making a cold brew concentrate. This is taking a lot more pressure than usual, but we're just going to keep going with it. Try to get as much out of here as possible. Let's call that good. Okay. That took a lot more pressure than I thought it would. Um, but it is a really, ooh. So this is a concentrate, but uh, that's actually quite tasty on its own. Interesting. Very rich. Um, I'm going to try adding a little water, as you might, to a concentrate. Just kind of double it up. Just eyeballing there. Yeah, that's a nice coffee. Um, interesting for the, uh, for the Congo Mungano, this is pulling out a lot of the brighter notes. So if you if you watch the review of the Congo, um, which if it's up by the time this goes up, I'll link to it. Um, uh, when I brewed it on the Cleta Wave, I got a lot of grapefruit and raisin, and I'm actually getting uh, like the grapefruit in here. Maybe a little bit of the raisin too. I can smell like dried fruit. So that's really interesting. Uh, I, I haven't cold brewed with this in any other way, so I actually don't know how this compares as cold brew, but this is an enjoyable coffee, uh, and it's something that uh, it means whenever I'm traveling, if I have questionable coffee sources, I can just grab a bottled water and brew with it. So that's pretty great. Hmm. And um, just a point of interest, so I, I did two scoops up to the two, and I've already drank in a lot of this, but uh, when I filled with more water, I think the, the concentrate filled up to about here and I doubled it up. So I'm getting, you know, an eight ounce cold brew, um, fairly well concentrated. Those two scoops are, uh, I think they end up being about 15 grams each. So that is as much caffeine as would be in uh, 500 milliliters brewed, like with a, with a Kalita Wave, for example. Uh, and you don't need heat to extract caffeine. Caffeine is remarkably water soluble. Uh, so this, um, this almost certainly has uh, a large amount of caffeine in it, um, especially considering the, <laughs> the amount that's in here. So I should probably stop throwing that down. Really delicious though, actually. Um, anyway, that is cold brewing on the AeroPress. Uh, so again, you, you do like the old school original AeroPress recipe. For each scoop that you add, you fill up to that uh, water line is basically what it is. And you want room temperature coffee. If you're, if you're using colder coffee, it's probably going to be a little more difficult to extract things. That's just my guess. Um, they say room temperature in the, uh, in the instructions and, um, I haven't done any comparison, but yeah, it's as straightforward as that, uh, fine drip grind and then play around with it. Adjust from there. Your mileage may vary, but, uh, 
seems to work pretty well. If you have any questions about the AeroPress, AeroPress Go, uh, cold brewing on these, if you have any other recipes for cold brewing, I'd love to hear them. Uh, try out some different ways we can play around with this. That'd be really cool. Uh, I think, especially for the go, for traveling, that's a fantastic solution to water quality. Um, so yeah, comment below your thoughts. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.